configuring NetScaler VPX 12.x version in one arm configuration. Let's say in DMC environment. In other videos or in NetScaler video series, my lab topology, something like my NetScaler has two interfaces or two arm, one to the external in in network, which was internet, and another one to internal network, which was a uh, network with the servers, right? And all the external internet flow from my servers to internet was going through NetScaler. NetScaler was serving as a default gateway to them. Without NetScaler, there was no other way or route that the network traffic can go out. This type of topology you may find in a very small environment or in a testing environment. But ideally, in most of the environment, especially SMB or small enterprise, you may find something like this we have two firewalls or something like this this is also one of the very common deployment type where NetScaler it's in DMZ but instead of two firewalls there is just one three-legged firewall this means a firewall has three interfaces one to external network one to internal network and one to DMC network. Web servers that you want to load balance are also published or connected to DMZ network. NetScaler also has an interface to DMZ network. It has no interface to internal network and no interface to external network. Internal network also has no, has not they don't need to involve NetScaler for outbound internet flow. For example, I have a server subnet here 10, 10, 10 and client subnet 10, 10, 11. If they need to go out on the internet, their default gateway most likely will be core switch. Core switch will send it to the firewall and firewall, firewall will send it to external router and, and so on. So this is the internet flow. NetScaler is not involved. For web servers that I'm publishing through NetScaler, this will be the flow. External user will connect to firewall. Public IP will be assigned to firewall. Firewall will net that to a DMC IP, which will be an IP address of virtual server that you will create it on NetScaler. And then NetScaler using SNP or subnet IP will communicate with backend web server for web server service. And then once the response go back to SNP, NetScaler will use WIP to pass it to external client. And then again, Firewall will do the netting and pass the traffic to external clients. In my environment, internal network indicated by green, DMZ by blue, and external by red. This is also a very common topology that you will find in small to medium sized business and enterprise, and some small enterprises as well. So, I have decided to create one video using this topology. I will be very quick in configuring stuff. I will not configure an SVPX2, I will just configure one. Rest of the concepts are exactly the same, the difference is topology. All the videos that I have published before about high availability and pre-authorization, SSO, VPN, everything, load balancing, the concept is exactly the same. As I said, there are hundreds of possibilities with NetScalers. Lots of deployment scenarios are possible, but this one is the most common, common one. And most likely, that's what 
you will be doing when you will be going to your customer side for doing POC or proof of concepts. Proof of concept. So if you want to do POC or proof of concept, then this is this is the video that will be useful for you. Then I will show you how to quickly configure NetScaler VPX gateway, configure load balancing, and of course SSL gateway. Keep this in mind as firewall is involved here. You, if you have access to that firewall, make sure that you create appropriate NAT rules. You allow NetScaler for name, or let's say name, DNS name resolution. That scaler needs to contact to domain controller as well. For example, uh, for radius for LDAP based authentication. So make sure appropriate ports are allowed. Um, so if you're not managing the firewall and you're going to customer side, all you have to do is request the customer to create appropriate rules uh, in firewall so that you can set up that scaler properly. Of course, when you're setting for web access, you may need to modify the external DNS as well, adding appropriate host records, and they need to assign public IPs to the firewall, and then those IPs will be netted to the DMZ IP addresses that you will use in your NetScaler for virtual IPs. So whoever is managing the firewall, it also has an important role to play. So this is the topology I will I would like to create one video on, and I'm using for this NetScaler VPX version 12.x, which is the latest and greatest. You may say that why are the other video I use 10.5, but honestly, when I went to the Citrix website and downloaded NetScaler uh, VPX gateway. Uh, ADC clients, uh, I got was what I got from their website was 10.5. Uh, I double check, triple check what was available to download as an evaluation was 10.5. I thought, okay, I will download 10.5 and then I will, in one video, I will show you how to update to 12. But and that's what my plan, but unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of 12.0 firmware I tried but I was unable to get it so that's why I decided that to make one video for VPX version 12 and the second important thing is is still in the market version 10.5 is the most commonly deployed version I would say around 70 to 80 percent still using version 10.5 although some users you will find they're still using version 9 point something but 10.5 is the most commonly deployed uh, version and concepts are exactly the same wizard is slightly different i mean the uh, gui is slightly different but otherwise it's all same stuff Okay, just to give you an idea, this is what I will be covering before we proceed to hands-on stuff. Uh, this is, as I said, it's mostly hands-on. I won't discuss the concept too much. And it will be like a quick and short POC sort of a configuration. So these are the topics I will be going through. Initial configuration licensing, setting up DNS and NTP, enabling basic features, Configuring load balancing, session persistence, and HTTP compression. Uh, configuring HTTP monitoring, generating SSL certificate, and configuring SSL offloading. Configuring NetScaler VPN gateway for SSL VPN. Configuring pre-authorization policies. Configure, sorry, configuring pre-authentication policies and authorization policies. Configuring application firewall and bind to HTTP virtual server. Configuring LDAP authentication as well as configuring content switching if possible due to time. So, this is the agenda for this video, and this is what I'm planning to do. So, that's it.
let's start so without further ado let's just move on to the practical demonstration nsvpx i just fired up here i need to assign vip uh, sorry nsip or net skill ip address which will be for man management so i will use 21.200 subnet mask zero Gateway will be the gate uh, IP address of firewall interface in DMZ. Five four, as you can see here, this is the firewall interface. That skill has to go out this way. So this is the default gateway. Seven seventy two sixteen twenty one dot two five four, which is the IP address of firewall DMZ interface. Okay, save the config, it will restart, I will pause the video, and I will be back when it's done. Okay, NatScaler is up and running, so I will go to one of my internal server, and I will go for 10, as well. 172, 16, 21, 200. And this is the NetScaler IP or NSIP for NSVPX1, NSRoot, and the default password NSRoot. It will give me this configuration wizard, as you can see. I need to define subnet IP that it will be using to communicate with servers, running services. So I will say 172.16.21.210 because my web servers are on DMZ network and my NetScaler is also connected to DMZ network. There is no other interface connected anywhere else, so I need to specify an IP of a DMZ network, right? Like this. Subnet IP address, which will be used by this NetScaler to communicate with these web servers over here and get the response back and then pass it to client using the FIP or virtual IP. Again, I'm not explaining the concepts here. I have explained the concepts in my video series on other videos uh, this is just a short or quick drill for version 12 okay host name nsvdx1 dns i will assign dns service which is running on my firewall as well I will leave the time as it is. As far as the license is concerned, to save time, I have already downloaded the license. As you know, the license is based on MAC address. So before you go to customer, you, all you have to do, you can generate the license based on any dummy MAC address. And when you import the appliance uh, in ESXi, all you have to do just change the MAC address of that interface with the MAC address that you use to generate the license file. It will save time. So upload license file, browse, and this is the license file. It's asking for reboot. So reboot it is. You want to save the configuration? Yes. And it's rebooting. Right now it's VPX1, I mean, it's still in evaluation mode. Let's see when it comes back. What is the case? Okay, NetScaler is back up and running. Let's log in. And VPX1000, which is a good thing. Awesome. Good. 
So first thing first I like to do, as you know me, go to settings and I like to enable all features. Depends on your license, of course. Most features will be enabled. I like to enable all basic features and they are enabled. Next thing that I like to see and verify it's under networks, IPs, just to check. Yeah, sub one is subnet IP and one is mm, that scalar IP and SIP, and this is SNP. And routing table, routes, default route goes to, of course, firewall. If you see my topology, here, this is the topology I'm doing it, right? If firewall needs to talk to domain controller, let's say, do I need to add 10, 10, 10 subnet route to Netscaler? Actually, no. You know why? Because Netscaler default gateway is going to firewall. So, whenever Netscaler wants to talk to any 10, 10, 10, let's say 10, 10, 10, 100, it will send the traffic to firewall, and firewall has an interface to 10, 10, 10 network, so it will pass this request here. So I will be able to communicate with them. Will I be able to communicate 10, 10, 11? Well, it depends on the firewall. The firewall has to have a route, because firewall don't have an interface in 10, 10, 11 subnet. So if somebody from 10, 10, 11 subnet wants to communicate with the firewall, firewall should also have a route that that in order to communicate with 10, 10, 10, 11 subnet needs to go use this interface and a gateway which is usually a core switch. Okay, keep this in mind. So I think I don't need to add any route for 10, 10, 10 network, and I, we can verify that. So if I go to Netscaler login NS root, NS root. Don't forget default password is NS root. Well, don't forget to change it. So if I ping 10, 10, 10, 100, yes, see, I can ping it. Also, if I can ping google.com, yes, I can ping google.com as well. So I have internet access as well. Those guys who are managing the firewall, they give me internet access, let's say. We are assuming Right. We are on the customer side doing POC, and whenever we need something from a firewall side, we'll ask us to do it. Okay. Good thing. So, so good. Now, time to configure load balancing, right? Let's do it. So, for load balancing, what we do? Okay. One more thing before load balancing. If you want to set up a time server, you can go to NTP and time server, it could be internal time server, uh, uh, or it could be an external time server, okay, um, user administration, you can add some local users, for example, I can add a user called NS admin. continue and I can buy, make him a super user and bind to super user policy save done okay login privilege is still disabled but can be enabled of course And see, enable external authentication. I don't want that because this guy is a local local user. External authentication means if I configure LDAP authentication, it will look for that person. Let's save the configuration. Don't forget to keep keep. Uh, don't forget to that you should take backup of. Let's configuration so that when something happens, you can always back and restore. 
you can create a backup like this. I will show you first. Let's have some configurations first. So, some serious configurations. Uh, let's go to traffic management, load balancing, virtual server. Let's define a virtual server, V server, or we will call it V server HTTP. For protocol HTTP, IP address will be DMZ IP address, of course. 21.199 and of course there will be a public IP users will be connecting to public IP so firewall admin will create a NAT rule of that public IP or port 80 and pass it to port 80 of this IP which is assigned to NetScaler as a virtual server okay again again I'm explaining this because Firewall admin needs to be involved because NetScaler is behind the firewall. It's in DMC network. So right now it's no load balance virtual server. It's mine too, but I would like to bind to so the add and I'll say web server one. I have three web servers here, right? 101, 102, 103 in DMZ, and that's what I'm adding there. System 101, done, and, oh, sorry. Add web server to one seventy two sixteen twenty one one two done and add web server three okay one seventy two sixteen twenty one one or three okay done And I select all three of them, and all three web servers in my scenario have equal CPU, equal amount of RAM, equal processing power, equal bandwidth. So, wait, yeah, I will keep it the same. So, load will be equally distributed or equally balanced between them by NetScaler. So, I'll say bind. All three of them are bind to it. All of three of them are up, continue, and one more thing, the round robin method, right now is least connection, no, no, sorry, no, not round robin method, and the load balancing method is least connection, I would like to change it to round robin, okay, and done, and virtual server is up, persistence is done, Right now, it means my fashion will toggle between multiple servers. So we have a name called portal.itsense.com that's mapped to the public IP, which is mapped to this internal subnetwork IP. So I go to so portal.itsense.com. And here it is. If I refresh, one, it's web server one. Refresh, web server two. Shift refresh, web server three. Shift refresh, web server one. Web server two. Web server, web server three. And that's what round robin is all about. It's round, it's sending to web server one, then next request to web server two, next request to web server three. Again, if I want session persistence because my application is sensitive and would like client to always deal with one server for the entire session until it gets timeout, maybe it's some 
shopping application or banking application or secure application that requires some you know transaction and some time and for that it's better to hold the session to be engaged with one server so we can always edit it and under persistence which is none I can set it to source ID so based on source ID be persistent so let's save the configuration and let's go to client so if I say shift refresh web server one shift refresh still web server one shift refresh still web server one why because now session persistence is enabled my session will stay with web server one until it gets timeout depends on the timeout value specified in that scale okay good 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 so session persistence http compression yeah http compression again in my case uh, it's not very you know, my applications are not in, it's not very huge um, so quantum size uh, for me it's 50 so anything bigger than 50 bytes it will compress and compress with optimal level I don't want to allow server side compression and make sure if you are using Netscaler to do HTTP compression you can disable the on server uh, server side compression on servers so so these are these are the few things that you know uh, you can configure for your client POC so so far so good all right see right now you may not notice there's any difference between 9.5 and 12 almost the same almost oh okay okay that scalar is good isn't it okay little bit different stuff default stuff and not scale uh, 12 okay what next well what next I would say maybe you make figure yeah, SSL offloading for them for some virtual server that would be a good thing and that's what we'll do next Next, next thing that we be configure it's all. Uh, sorry. The next thing that I would like to configure is SSL offloading, like installing a certificate and creating an HTTPS virtual server, and then offloading it and passing the request to DMZ web servers as HTTP. As I said, advantage of SSL offloading is the servers doesn't have to do SSL offloading processing, like decompression. And number two, Netscaler can inspect the traffic because once the traffic pass to Netscaler, Netscaler do SSL offloading means it decrypts the packet from SSL. So HTTPS to HTTP and then it can inspect the content. So if there is anything harmful, it can block it. So let's save the configuration here and as I mentioned earlier that I would show you how to back it up backup and restore very simple you can say backup what finally is NSVPX backup and maybe I can mention the date 18970 I would like to take full backup and backup is created 
and I can uh, download it. Here it is, and I have downloaded backup of my system on my system. It's a good idea that you should do it regularly. Okay, SSL offloading. SSL offloading, SSL offloading. Now to scale up. First step, what was the step? And the step was to create RSA key pair, which is private key and public key. So key file name I will say SSL Key length, key size 2048, I will leave the default. Uh, key format, I will use 3 dash. And here, the password that I will use to encrypt this file. SSL key file. And we create the SSL key file. The next thing is we will create a certificate request. And SSL CSR key file that we have generated in previous step. The same password that we use, method that we want to use for digest SHA common name, it's the name on the certificate that I want. I want something like secure.vpn.com or also start vpn come on come on itsense.com who is vpn.com okay organization name is itsense come on too many fields great And a stop Australia. Challenge password and company name ID and create. And CSR has been created. And once the CSR has been created, we'll go, we'll go to SSL. You see, Man Certificate Key CSR. I will go down, select my CSR, and I will say View. And then I will copy this request. Copy. Then I'll go to my internal certificate authority, which is DC slash search serve request a certificate advance paste web server submit base 64 encoded download show in folder to rename it so that easy for me what was it secure dot it sense dot right that was it that was the name we requested i think so okay so go back to netscaler close this out let's go here ssl ssl files certificate upload uh, go to download the system. This is the certificate that I like to upload it. I have uploaded and now go to server certificate install and I will say install SSL cert 
certificate file name secure.sitsense.com key file this is the key file that we have generated SSL key file includes the keys the password that you use to encrypt that file and say install and it is installed okay awesome once it's installed we need to associate this to one virtual server so let's go back to our virtual server and add a new virtual server. Let's do ES SSL. Okay. And type of traffic is SSL. 172.16.21.198.199 we used for HTTP. Once again, there will be another IP, a public IP. Firewall guy has to make an app rule for HTTPS traffic to the HTTPS of this DMZ IP. Okay, keep this in mind. We created this SSL. Right now, there is no binding, but we can select these. So request comes as SSL, but the client will request SSL uh, protocol or do SSL requests to NetScaler. NetScaler will offload it and pass the request to backend servers as normal HTTP. They will re reply as normal HTTP and the NetScaler will encrypt it as SSL and pass it that will pass the encrypted response to the client on the internet as SSL. Okay. Continue. No server certificate has been assigned. So we will select this SSL certificate and select and bind. Continue. All good. Anything you want to change here? Maybe persistence. If we want to, we can say source IP, for example. Okay. And method. Load balancing method. Least connection. You can say round robin, but again, yeah. We will not be able to see that because we did the session persistence. Okay, so let's go to client and this time we will open another one and say HTTPS secure.idsense.com. And we should be able to see the server. There we go. And if we see the certificate, the lock, it's been issued to secure.itsense.com, today's date, and issued by my internal certificate authority. Shift, refresh, is still web server 2 because of session persistence great stuff so we configured SSL offloading now one more thing though uh, uh, not here sorry I will go to services yes monitoring right now it's a default tcp monitoring like normal tcp saying an acknowledgement but maybe the web server is up 
and running but the web service http service is down but this monitoring alert will still say our oh, server is running but that's not the point the main purpose of the server is to serve the http traffic or web traffic which is not serving so maybe we'll have, i would like to change the monitoring so we can say add pointing and like I did in my previous demo, I can choose the default or built in HTTP. Select bind, close, done, and add binding. Oh, sorry. You can of course create a new one based on the TCP header or content value. It's very versatile. You will see lots of demos are available related to monitoring and creating customized alerts. So we change the type of binding, with SSL offloading, SSL virtual server, SSL to HTTP transfer. We have tested many things. So what we have tested, done, done, basic feature done, load balancing done. Session persistence done, HTTP monitoring done, and done. Now we will configure NetScaler Gateway for SSL VPN, and for that I will generate another certificate, let's say a wildcard certificate. Okay. So, okay. For SSL VPN feature, let's generate a quick certificate. Let's generate key file again. I will say wildcard cert keys 204H 3S. And we have generated key pair. Then certificate request wildcard cert rack key file name wildcard cert keys password that I used in previous uh, screen name star dot itsense.com organization itsense organization training test at itsense.com city sydney state 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 Let's go to yeah. challenge password company challenge password or this password, whatever would you like to use. I use NS root as a default, but you can use whatever you like uh, and create SSR created. Then let's go to the top, manage certificate key CSR, wildcard certificate request. I would like to view that so that I can copy it and copy it and go back to my certificate authority 
and request a certificate. Paste it. Web server, submit. Download. Show the folder. Let's see. Wildcard.ids and stuff. Then go here, close this one out, go back, SSL, server certificate, install, wildcard cert, file, upload. Wildcard cert key file wildcard cert keys password that I use to encrypt install and it's done. Don't worry about this and FIPS are the system. Uh because there's no FIPS of course. Uh, once I install the certificate, now what I need to do, of course, we need to do what was the purpose of getting the certificate, which was configuring NetScaler Gateway. Right. So we'll go to NetScaler Gateway Wizard and, of course, once again. Firewall guy, they need to have a public IP for that scaler. That should be added to the virtual server IP. So we have certificate and we use local authentication. Get started. That scaler gateway IP address 172.16.21.197. Okay, and name will be vpn.idsense.com. Redirect request for port 82 secure port. Okay. So if somebody write HTTP vpn.idsense.com, it will automatically be redirected to HTTPS vpn.idsense.com. Okay. vpn.idsense.com for port 3, use existing certificate. I will use wildcard cert, continue. Okay, local authentication. We will use user called test user, password, no secondary authentication, continue, done. And SSL configuration is configured, uh, is set up. SSL VPN gateway is configured. I'll save it and let's test. Oops, sorry. I will start the client. Okay, the client computer has started and uh, it was turned off somehow. And <laughs> I will open the browser and we will type it in itsense.com and we should be redirected to HTTPS URL and as you can see it's been redirected asking for login so and I will log in and two options are given connect with the plugin or client link clientless access I would say connect with the plugin. Previously, the plugin has been downloaded to this machine. And I had some, oh, you see something happened here? A NatScaler gateway. It did appear. And it's trying to connect the background. And once I got connect, uh, get connected, I will see a window will change to 
something that a client class users receive. And just watch it here. You would see some shadowing stuff here. Okay. So good. Looks like I'm connected. So because log off option is here. Although Netscaler is not showing on our client plugin is not showing here on my taskbar. Which which is a little weird though it, it it used to show, but once I updated the newer version, it happened this way that although it is connected, as you can see, it's alive. And just to show you, I can manually launch this. You see? Log off option and start. Connection duration, one minute, five seconds. So it's there, but it just somehow just doesn't show. So it means I would be able to access website with internal IP addresses, which are 172.16.21.101, web server 1, awesome, web server 2, yeah, web server 3, yeah, and I think, what was that, what was that, dc, dot id, sense, dot com. Searcher. Oh, otherwise we can just we can try by DC dot IT sense dot Oh, I think I have a problem with the internal uh, main resolution. I uh, that's fine, but we can check later. Yeah, I can connect. So IP sends at to write all and yes, I can access shared folder as well. So ten, 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 one hundred. Yes, IP sends. Yeah. I can access my internal network. What about ping? Okay, should be okay. Ping 10, 10, 10, 100. Yes. So I'm on my internal network and it worked perfectly. And we have tested Netscare gateway functionality that after configuring it, Client connects to a secure URL, can download the plugin or use the client less function and X internal network as they are sitting on inside the internal network. Good stuff. Let's log off. And let me it's trying to log me off. Clean up window appears. Yes, I would like them to clean up. Like clear the history, browser history, and everything, which is a good security feature. And it's done. Perfect. See, you're now logged. You're not logged in. Thank you. So guys, this is this was a test for SSL VPN and it worked perfectly. Cheers. One thing that I would like to mention that if you remember that if you have a problem that your internal computers after sorry after SSL VPN your client cannot resolve internal names. Just make sure that you go to Netscaler Gateway Global Settings, Change Global Settings, and make sure that you add internal DNS server as well, because that was missing in my case. I forgot to add, so I have added that, and after that I test that, and it, and I can see that my, after establishing SSL connection, now my clients can resolve internal names as well. So this is one pointer I wanted to mention to you. 
and of course here are some settings where you can add the bookmarks or the portal and internet applications specify IP ranges maybe customize the portal with some, some logos change the portal themes so all those options are there one of the important option is the pre-authentication policy that maybe you want NetScaler to perform you know some endpoint analysis on the client computer before allowing them to log in for example I created, a, I created one video in a series where I was checked for Windows Defender service. So let's do that here as well. Uh, we want Netscaler to check for Windows Defender service to be running. If it's running, then it will allow the user to log in. So first thing first, we go to global settings, change pre-authentication settings, change to deny as a default action. Then under policies, we go to pre-authentication policies, add and we will say, let's say, pre-auth policy and request action is allow, <laughs> allow access and expression we can say find security service and the windows defender service name is win defend exist existence running done create so now we have created the policy and we have a profile as well which will allow access if windows defender service is running Next thing we need to do, go to the virtual server. This is our Net, Net, Netscaler Gateway virtual server. Add it to settings. And go all the way down to policies. And Sorry about that. Choose the policy type, pre authentication, continue, and here I can select the policy that I created and bind. So now the pre authentication policy is bound to this virtual server, and now it's time to test. So I'm back on the client computer. Let's do one thing. We can go to the settings and turn off Windows Defender. Okay. And we go to vpn.itsense.com. It's redirect to HTTPS and you see EPA endpoint analysis in order to access the specific resources and for analysis required you want to run the scan always and checking and access denied it doesn't mean the requirement I would say check again okay so now what to do Let's go back and turn on. All right. It's turn on. And we say go back. And it's checking again. And now it gave us login box. Because, because, because. Windows Defender service is running. We pass the pre authentication policy test and log in. And now I can log in and again the usual stuff launch the client or launch the plugin or access the agentless way. So that's how you configure pre authentication policies 
almost the same way in version 12 like we did in version 10.5. All good. Awesome. Cheers. As far as authorization policies are concerned, that after logging in, what the user can access or what cannot access, that's how you define in the, under authorization policies. So once again, change the global settings. We need to make sure default authorization policy is disabled, which is good. And we go to the authorization policy and add, and we'll say contractor access. Action allow and expression is okay. Well, let's go to classic syntax. So we will say request. I think in general is okay. IP destination IP is let's say 10, 10, 12, or 10, 10, sorry, 172, 16, 21, 101, and 255, 255, 50, done, and IP destination IP is 172.16.21.102.255.255.55.255.255. Oh, sorry, I changed this to 255. Okay. So only these two websites. Or IP address this person this policy is allowing let's say contractors are allowed to access only these two IPs so let's create this we have created this policy and then we can go to user administration AAA user and go to authorization policy and we can bind this contractor access policy to this user done okay one more thing that I would like to do here is configure the application firewall it's a very very uh, rich application firewall with lots of features with lots of signatures with lots of type of checks it can protect or protect against distributed denial of services cross site scripting SQL injection and so many sort of stuff. It's a very rich firewall, as I said, and you will see there are so many types of signatures there. Very easy uh, to configure if you use application wizard. Otherwise, it can be very intimidating. Uh, there are several other protection features as well. One of them is HTTP denial of service. This feature is not yet enabled, but I can get that feature enabled. And then we can, of course, specify the all service policy here. Same thing for IP reputation based security. Yes, it checks the database to see the updated IP addresses and use the web group database. So if you want to enable the reputation, Enable the reputation from uh, reputation as well. I can enable this feature and you can change the reputation settings if you are using the proxy server. Anyway, let's go back to the application firewall. So I'll use the application firewall wizard and we will create a new configuration and I will say web test config. And profile type, what type of applications I'll have. If you're not sure, select this because it includes HTML as well as all 
latest and greatest technologies. And next, what type of traffic it will be applied to? By default, it's all traffic, and that's what I'm okay with. Next. Or do I like to create a new signature or do I select an existing signature? I think right now there is no signature. So I would like to create a new signature. And we can make a simple edit mode or advanced edit mode. Next. And these are different signature and signature rules. You can see all these categories and, and miscellaneous and here I have this option where I can say enable these rules. I enabled all of them. It's just a test. You see. Now, as far as the block is concerned, for a start URL, I would like to change enable to, to enable learn. Um, enable learn. Enable learn, not block. But for others, like credit card, it's already enabled. SQL injections. I'll say enable block. And it bound to its global policy. That's great. Awesome. So this firewall policy, firewall has been enabled and configured. So if I go to profiles, I will see the profile that I have created. Policy. This is the policy that I have created. Signature. This is one of the signatures which are included in this policy based on base version. Okay, the next step now is to bind this policy to the virtual server. So, what we will do, we will expand traffic management and load balance virtual server, and this is the HTTP virtual server that we have created so what we would like to do that whatever the traffic comes through to this virtual server I want my application layer firewall to inspect that traffic using that firewall policy and profile that we have created and all those signatures that we have enabled for that so we will double click on this and policies and add. what type of policy I would like to add application firewall choose type request continue and here we can select the policy that we have created and select and bind and as you can see down that's it as simple as that and now firewall will be active again application layer firewall based on the settings in this profile will be active against this http virtual server so any traffic that comes through this http virtual server will be inspected against this firewall profile and settings and those signatures and all that 
as I mentioned, it's an application layer firewall protect against SQL injection, cross-site uh, scripting, distributed denial of service attacks, credit card, uh, uh, mask sensitive information like credit cards and all. Um, strongly recommend when you enable or configure signatures, don't enable unnecessary signatures. For example, if you don't have, uh, let's say, Linux-based web servers, then no need to enable those signatures that are related to them. Also, I would strongly recommend if you go to YouTube and look for Citrix Synergy sessions, there are some very good sessions on this application firewall series or application firewall that actually demonstrate and that it sh and shows that how this firewall working against those applications. Some use some web-based application called WebGoat and there are some demos where some people, they have created their own customized applications to show the functionality that how firewall, upscaler firewall will protect against uh, SQL injection and cross-site scripting. Uh, I will strongly encourage you to look for those tutorials so that you will realize that how good and great this firewall is. It's one of the best in the industry and I will strongly encourage you to dig deep and try to spend your learning curve on, on on this subject okay great thanks as far as configuring system for NetScare system for LDAP is concerned at the system level you can go to authentication LDAP First, you need to define the LDAP server, for example, you can say DC server IP 10, 10, 10, 100. Server type is AD and domain component is the port of IP sense, comma, domain component, com, administrators. CN users uh, domain component IT sense domain component com. administrative password. Of course, in real life, you won't use the domain admin, your default domain admin. You will create another account, protect the very secure password, and use that. It doesn't have to be domain admin. All, all the point is it should be able to test, read the attributes. It's reachable, credentials are valid, and Login with SAM account, group attributes, member of, common name, and default authentication group if you want to mention here. Uh, you want to mention any particular authentication group, you can do that. SSO name, attribute, and create. We created a server, then a policy, add ad auth server, and we can say that is true. Advanced application policies. Okay. There is one thing called advanced policies. And you can say add and add uh, policies time. LDAP action is DC and
sure. Log action is button. And it's created. For VPN or access gateway, of course, you have an option of authentication here. and you can specify authentication servers by default which will appear here because we set it at the global level one more thing if you are creating a user for example you may say how would I create a user a test user right how would I create a user and bound and pre-authorization or, or pre-authentication authorization policy if that user doesn't exist here in existing active directory well what you can do let's say I have a user called mark in AD to specify the username which is the same account name mark and make sure the checkbox externally authentication external authentication is checked external authentication check is checked means it's a back-end user it means it's the user not local in firewall but it's defined in the other type of authentication that you are using for example in my case it's LDAP so it means it's an LDAP or AD user and once you define a user here without a password it's a back-end user and then of course you can edit a user and add or specify authorization policies to a user. Okay. So save the config. Okay. So what we have done so far, initial configuration and licensing, it's done, setting up DNS and doing things. Uh, so NTP done, enabling basic features done, load balancing done, session persistence, compression done, HTTP monitoring done, SSL offloading done, NetScaler VPN, NetScaler gateway for VPN done, pre-authentication policies done, authorization policy done, application firewall and applying it to virtual server done LDAP authentication done okay as I said earlier content switching I will do if possible let me see what I can do and in future yes I add one more point in future and it depends on time don't count me on it uh, I will make a video related to publishing separate storefront using NetScale publishing or load balancing with say separate storefront because of course that's one of the requirements or oh, sorry one of the use of Citrix that scale up that you have Citrix storefront for your VDI environment that can balance load between them as well as securely I uh, provide secure access to Citrix storefront in a V uh, yeah and as you know that now it's just Citrix, Zen App, and Zen Desktop, mainly the same product. Um, so I will, I will try to do it, but I need to, in order to do that, I need to set up Citrix Zen Desktop environment. The previous environment that I did set up has expired because it was a trial license, of course. So it may take some time. As far as content switching is concerned, so if you remember my video of content switching, that was a scenario. We I did URL based content switching. One web uh, well, web was defined to content switch virtual server, and then two virtual server without any web and redirecting to appropriate service so let's do real quick one more thing a very important point usually POCs or proof of concept are not paid you do that for customer requirements so try to save as much time as much time as you can 
uh, try to prepare your homework or try to do your homework prior to that write it down better to send them out advanced requirement that that's what you required that type of firewall rules will be required if you want to configure that scale so you don't get stuck and if you're good with PowerShell scripting but one thing that you can do because at the end the customer might they need to see the functionality they don't need to sit around with you to see how you're configuring it so a few pointers just to make sure that you are on the right track okay so what i want to do i forgot okay i think it was oh man oh. Come on. Traffic management, content switching. Let's create. I will say Wheat as virtual server, content switching. HTTP is fine. Target type is none. IP address, I will say 16.21196. Once again, it's a DMZ based IP. And I'm repeating myself again and again. Firewall guy, where is our firewall guy? Yeah, the firewall guy is very important. He needs to cooperate with you with nettings and all that stuff. You know what I'm trying to say. That's required for the proper functionality for Netscale, okay? So catch that firewall guy if that's not you. Okay, so alright. Now, so far, no virtual server is bound to it. So, no, sorry. So, we have created this close content switching virtual server. Right? done and I will create here under load balancing two more virtual servers and let's see what was that VS1 and VS2 okay so VS1 HTTP non addressable because no web will be assigned to them okay and I will bind it to web server. Okay. Done. Okay. Same thing, another VS2 non addressable. Bind it to web server to find continue down. Okay, so VS1 pointing to web server run, VS2 pointing to web server 2. All right, so on my web servers, uh, in web server 2 especially, I have created another page. It's the same page with the modification, and I change it to index.htm. There is no index.htm on web server one. So, just to show if I go to web server one, which is 172.16.21.101, index.htm, nothing. But if I go to web server two, is there okay so that's what I will use like a content switching policies sort of just to demonstrate like I did in my previous video URL based content switching so without further ado let's go back to content switching okay. <laughs> policy let's define a policy and CS URL policy 
action allow and access what do you think uh, okay oh sorry I'll say the URL based. What's domain? Domain is the URL that, or, or, or uh, sorry, domain is the, of course the first part of that URL, domain name. So I was a CS test dot the let me sense, dot com. and URL which to look for. Is index.htm. Okay. Create index.htm. So we have a virtual server and a policy. Right. You may say, what's content switching actions are? Well, that's something that we can discuss if some other time, that if we got the appropriate time for it. But right now, what I'm trying to do is content switching. So we have a virtual server, content switching virtual server. Right now, no policies defined to it. So I will select the policy. I will select the policy and target virtual server. I will choose index.html or VS2. Right. So I'll do it here. So it means this policy, which is right here, which has a URL defined, like somebody write http csstest.itsense.com slash index.htm take it to virtual server 2 oh uh -huh. sorry zero no can't define priority numbers for this type of content switching uh, policies okay Okay, that's the condition that somebody's connecting, typing CS test, writesense.com slash index.htm, take it to virtual server 2. What if you write something else? Or just write CS test.writesense.com? In this case, we can define a default server, and default server in our case is PS1. Bind. Done. Okay. Missing on this? I don't think so. Alright, so this content switching server is up once again. One content switching policy that says uh, you that check on URL and if the condition met, will pass it to the S2. Otherwise, go to VS1. And just to double check, we go back to policy and say index.html for CS test Perfect. And we'll test it now. So give me a second. Uh, let me fire up a client computer and we'll take it from there. Okay. My client computer is ready, so I fire up a browser. And write down, let's say, cstest.itsense.com without index.ht. Okay. And it takes me to web server 1 because that was the default condition. But if I write index.htm, it will take me to web server 2. And that's what's supposed to do, isn't it? Index.htm 
and if we go to virtual server that's what it's supposed to do right pass it to web server 2 2 hits so far and if something else take it to VS1 correct so our content switching policy is working so if I write let's say something else I I S start dot HT HTM go back to web server one don't write anything else just write the content the same type of main URL web server one but if I write again in next web server two so this is a small demo of content switching based on URL but content switching as I said earlier it could be for different sets of sites for example you have users connected to mobile sites when they're using mobiles you may want to redirect them to mobile sites when they're kind of using desktop you want to redirect them to desktop sites you know depending on the type of browser they are using and the user agent field so it could be anything in my case, I'm just using an lab environment just to show you a demo, a URL based content switching, and we did that. Awesome. So, uh, we have done it. Congratulations. So, this is all done, and as I said, in future, then it depends on time, I will make a video related to you know, publishing Citrix storefront using Netscaler. So, congratulations, you have set up Citrix Netscaler VPX version 12, which is latest and greatest, proof of concept for your customer. Awesome. So, this is it, guys. Um, I will stop it here. And once again, I would like to thank you and each and every one of you. And please go ahead the series, give us, give me your feedback. And hopefully, when I have time, I'll be producing some more videos, some related to this series, on other topics as well as some could be something else as well. Uh, there are a few topics, a few video series that I would like to cover, and that's surprise. And of course. I will announce prior to make or upload anything. So hopefully, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have equally enjoyed this. Once again, just to wrap up, this was the topology we were working minus VPX2. We just can just configure one appliance, and it was a DMZ in one arm configuration. And this is most likely type of configuration that you would deploy in its scale, you know, in, produ in production environment or in PUCs. Three-legged firewalls, you may have two different firewalls, not three-legged firewall, that's, that still won't make anything different for your net scale because it will be in DMC file. Okay? So take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> So take it easy guys, have fun, play around with VTX and it's something good to learn and something very exciting and take it easy, cheers.